My parents immigrated from Singapore to the United States in the 1980s to a tiny town in the south called Oxford, Mississippi. And as poor students, they ended up in a place where they didn't know a single person. They got married while in school and were taken in by a loving couple named Norman and Maxine Nelson, who ended up covering the entire cost of their wedding, the thousand dollars it took to put on, and who I would come to call grandma and grandpa. That stylish kid in the middle is me. <laughs> Thank you. And next to me, my two younger brothers, Dexter and Nicholas, who I'm extremely close with. Grandma and grandpa became our anchors in this country and were and still are so influential in how we became as people. My grandma's an internal optimist, and even as she developed an extremely rare neurological disease and Parkinson's, she remained and still remains today very positive. Like most first-generation Americans, I went away for work after college, in my case, to an extremely remote place in Hawaii called Molokai, 4,000 miles away from home. And like most, I, I really struggled with staying connected with my family and friends, especially my grandma. That's my grandma, and that tiny person in that tiny square, that's how we connect. And it's so frustrating how limiting it really is and still is to connect with people that we care about when we're not physically there. Like most people, I visited home once a year, hoping to make up for lost time in those few days. Over time, as my grandmother's Parkinson's developed and progressed, her hands started shaking, and we found ourselves holding hands a lot more, especially her shaky hand. And in those moments, I realized how underestimated our sense of touch really is, how powerful it is to convey emotions. The sense of touch is the first we develop as children. It's how we understand our world. It's how we understand ourselves and one another. It even influences our language. We describe people as warm, soft, hard, cold. This sense of touch is really what bridges the gap when our words fail to communicate how we feel. Think about life's hardest or most joyful moments. There's nothing, nothing to be said, but the sense of touch can bridge that emotional connection. And this is what's really missing when we think about communication today. I'm really grateful for the fact that we can have something like a video call. And today, we're in Boston, where the first audio call was made in 1876. But what's next? What comes after this? What's a paradigm like when we can free ourselves from this tiny glass screen? What's a paradigm look like when we can physically feel connected? Well, in 2015, I met two people that would become my fast friends, my brothers, and co-founders of a company called Emerge. And this was our idea on a napkin moment. <laughs> this was the philosophy that we each had individually for our lives and the philosophy of a company we wanted to build together. And what you'll notice is it all centers around human connection. The relationships, the bonds that we have with our friends and family, not only with them, but also people on the other side of the table, on the other side of the fence, on the other side of the border. Enhancing human connection and empathy. This is the mission that we wanted to pursue. And each of them shared with me a very personal story that resonated with mine. The person on the left is Isaac, and next to him, his aunt Nina's. His family's from Spain, and like most people, had very close to his extended family. His aunt Inez was like a second mother to him. He grew up his childhood spending many summers at her house in Alicante in Spain. And like myself, Isaac moved away from home for work, first to Germany, then to Colombia. Aunt Nina's one day developed breast cancer, and she fought it for months before it spread. One day, Isaac got the call. That same day, he took a flight from Colombia to Spain, from Madrid took a train to Alicante, from Alicante took a taxi to the hospital, and once he stepped into that hospital room, she whispered his name. She tried to say more. He reached out and held her hand, and she passed away. He shared with me that very personal story and how in that moment, he realized how disconnected he really was from her for all those months, and how badly he wanted to just have the slightest sense of touch to be able to do something as simple as send a caress over distance to comfort her. This is Mauricio talking with his family in Ecuador. In 2015, when we were building our company, we were still in Los Angeles, and they had just had a son together. In those early moments of childhood, there's moments that cannot be captured in 
a phone. First steps, first words. A child can't hold a conversation when they're one years old. But it's that sense of touch that really grounds us this, to this reality that makes us feel present. Mauricio daily wanted to reach through that screen and physically hold the hand of his wife, of his son, to do something as simple as throw a ball back and forth. Now we all have moments like this where we are separated from people that we deeply care about, or that sense of touch could do so much to make us feel connected. So we set out on a journey, an attempt to communicate touch over distance. But like many early technologies, there are challenges. We are entering a new era of the internet many are calling the metaverse. And it's going to be enabled by pretty radical technologies like edge computing, decentralized organizations, NFT, blockchain. But we think the most important aspect of this next era will be one that allows us to feel more connected with our loved ones. Because after all, if not, what is achieved if we remain limited with these two senses? Now, don't get me wrong, we're not attempting to replicate the feeling of the in-person reality. We're attempting to enhance it when that's just not possible. The sense of touch has been attempted for many decades. Gloves, wearables, suits. These one day could potentially enhance or attempt to replicate how the reality feels, but it creates a lot of friction for a person to use. We ask the question, what if you don't have to? What if we create a new understanding, a new expectation of touch in the virtual world? For us, it was way more important to create a frictionless experience for a person, one where you don't have to put anything on your body at all. So we took a different approach. Now, if you were close enough to this subwoofer, you would have not only heard that sound, but you would have felt it. And that's because sound is a mechanical energy wave that can impart a pressure on our skin that we can physically feel, especially our hands. Now imagine taking that basic concept of feeling sound energy, channeling it using a very special speaker at a particular frequency that's above the human hearing range, and feeling all of that energy in a single point. Imagine sculpting that sound in three dimensions that you could physically feel and hold and even share with someone that's not physically there. What if we could create a new language of touch in the virtual world, one that does not feel or behave like reality? What new possibilities we could enable in art and expression and creativity? For most of us, the most powerful experience would be a shared one. And it's pretty remarkable how with the slightest sense of touch and the right context, you can physically feel connected. Well, you don't have to imagine too much longer because for the last six years, we've been working tirelessly to make this happen. And today, here it is. Thank you. So this device creates the sense of touch using sound energy, and you can not only feel that sensation here and above the device within three feet or a meter distance above it, but also here and here within a 120 degree cone of interaction. Now, this device works in a variety of scenarios and contexts with a TV, with a 2D screen, with virtual reality, with augmented reality. Our goal is to create a platform for touch in the virtual world, a platform for touch in the metaverse. But because it's pretty difficult to see touch, I'm going to show you a video of people using our product instead. This is absolutely absurd. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's fantastic. God, that's pretty wild. Anyone in particular you would like to try this experience with? Yeah, my, my dad. Thinking that, oh, let's say my mom is playing. Thinking that I'm going to be able to touch her, like, right here in the game, it makes me happy. I, I just imagine that that would be a really meaningful thing to virtually be able to hold someone's hand while they are really craving some type of human interaction. Kind of just to connect with that person and have a completely new 
experience. You interact with people in your space virtually, and having that and then adding a physical experience to it, just more layers of it's like, whoa. <laughs> that sensory aspect was so fun. I hate the set, I feel like a super villain almost. Oh my god, my godson would love this. You can't get it. <laughs> it's very tactile. And the fact that you don't have to use those controls and uh, stuff like that, you're using your hands, makes it feel, I don't know, it's more visceral. And interacting with people, this is perfect. This is, I mean, again, this brings, no matter what the scale of it, this brings another level to that. Incorporating our sense of touch across distance, this has been a long time coming. We are right now in a technological leap, yet we still feel very disconnected from people that we deeply care about. Our sense of touch is how we understand ourselves, our world, and one another. We all have people that we deeply care about that we are physically separated from. We think it's time to change that very, very soon. If you agree, join us as we build a new paradigm to enhance human connection across distance and time, one where you can physically feel connected. Thank you.